Hello and welcome to episode 74 of Prosperity by the Pine. I'm your host, Bryce Carter, certified financial planner, chartered financial consultant, certified investment management analyst, and self-proclaimed millennial money expert. This is a podcast where we talk about money, investing, business, and life success while having a cold beer. First things first, cold beer of the week. This is the last one from my variety pack from Oddside Ales. It's their Grand River Nut Brown, English style brown ale. Let's give her a taste. That's a brown ale. Um, smoky, maybe, on the end? I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of brown ales. This is uh, – maybe it'll convince me by the time I get to the bottom of it, uh, but it tastes like every other brown ale to me. So good job, Oddside. You fulfilled your obligation there, 5.1%. And it's not bad. It's just I don't prefer brown ales. So I probably should just be reviewing IPAs, and maybe we'll make a switch. Or it'll be the Prosperity by the IPA pint. All right, here we go. Episode 74, advice, financial advice to a younger me, to a younger Bryce. If I could talk to younger Bryce, what would I say? Well, I give a, I give a lot of financial, I give financial advice to a lot of people, uh, clients, friends, family, uh, institutions, and some of the financial advice I'm giving is based on personal experience. Much more of it is based on textbook experience, you know, my knowledge of how the financial system works. And some of it is observed experience. Actually, probably much of it is observed experience, which is the experience in which I've gotten from meeting and talking with so many different people about their financial plans, their financial journeys throughout their life, the lessons that they learned, the lessons that they're trying to teach their kids, and maybe in some cases, grandkids and great grandkids. And those that observed experience and those shared stories, I think, hit home really well when you start to sit down and think, okay, what would I have done differently? And what am I going to try and do differently with my kids? So giving financial advice to myself uh, was when I was preparing for this episode was kind of weird because it's like talking to myself, which I normally only do in the middle of the night in the darkness uh, in, a, in a corner with sad country music. Aha, uh -huh, just kidding. Anyways, talking to myself is a little weird. So uh, I had to sit down and I had to think about this a lot and I had to write it down and say, what were the mistakes that I made? And what was the advice that I wish I, w I, I, I could give myself? Um, and, and so there was three or four main things that, that I think overall I've been pretty financially smart and successful. Uh, I've made mostly good decisions, but a few mistakes along the way. And so the first one was my wife and I's first house. I love this house. I, I still have fond, many fond memories of this house. But we bought a house not long after we were both graduated from college. I think we bought, I graduated in May and we bought our house in November and moved in shortly before Christmas that year. And man, it was just her and I, and we had, uh, we had a one dog and we bought a four bedroom, uh, two and a half bath house, uh, with a basement and two car garage on two acres. And it was like, and it was pretty expensive too. But man, it was so much more house than I needed. So my first piece would be like, just buy a smaller house. You don't need that extra expense right now. You don't need four bedrooms. So buy a house with two bedrooms because worst case scenario, you have, you guys have a kid planning quicker than you're planning. And all of a sudden, you know, you can start looking then, but still you got the two bedrooms, baby room in your room. And so I mean, it was a bit of a stretch. I stretched myself a little bit financially. I stretched myself with, as far as the maintenance and the upkeep. And uh, did we make it work? Yeah. Did I go into debt, ex excessive debt? No. But I don't think that I needed that stress at that time. And I would have honestly loved to spend those money on uh, money on other things. And so that would be the first piece of advice I can give myself would be buy the house that you need, not the one that you fall in love with because it's what you're you know, I didn't buy a starter home. I bought a third home and, and, uh, and I shouldn't have done that. So do I regret it? Maybe not because of the lessons learned. Do I wish I had done something different? Probably. So that's the first thing. Buy a smaller house. Start investing early. Okay. They told me this one in college too. Uh, and I learned it through all my classes, but I did not start investing in my 401k right away or my wife's 401k. We, neither one of us had a match. If we had a match, I would have started right away. But I started, I think, two years into my career, and I did the math at one point, and like, it, 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 and I'm only, I'm only in my 30s, but the the dollar amount just contributing 10% for those first two years would add up to by the time I am 60 years old would be 
I mean, it's probably in the hundreds of thousands. That's the difference between starting early because it's not the five, ten thousand I would have saved throughout those years or that year. It's the compound interest I would have earned on that money throughout the next forty years of my working career, right? And so, I I don't care what I was focused on student debt. I was focused on building up a cash reserve, emergency fund, all those things. And you should be, you should do those things. But you should start automatically day one at any employer, any new job with enrolling in the retirement plan. It's, that's it. That's the, that's the advice. And if somebody listening to this has a 401k and has not done it, call me in five years and thank me for that piece of advice because you're going to see a balance there and you're going to like it and it's, gonna, it's just going to add up and, it, and you're not going to miss the money that much. Start slow, 5 6%, build up to 15 That's the goal, okay? So start investing earlier. That's pretty simple. That's pretty straightforward. But- Good piece of advice. Regular budget meetings. I'm going to take a beer break here, get off my pedestal, try and convince myself that I like brown ales. I mean, I could drink it. Uh, they're getting okay. It's okay. I, you know, you know, brown ale always tastes a little bit like coffee to me. Does it taste like coffee to you, Allie? Yeah. Allie thinks they taste like coffee too, which I've never really been a huge fan of coffee. She does like it. Okay. Um, I, I, I've never been a huge fan of coffee, so I've always had French vanilla creamer in my coffee. Uh, and like the stuff that tastes like li- liquefied marshmallows, it's delicious. Uh, and I've been trying to trying to lose some pounds, so my wife said, if you drink bourbon straight, you can drink your coffee black. I'm like, oh, God, you make a point. So I've been drinking my coffee black. Normally, I think I would have spit this thing out, but I've been drinking my coffee black for like a month now. I think I could, I think I could do a brown ale. Again, maybe some food in between to wash off the terrible coffee taste. It's not bad. We can deal with it. Regular budget meetings. That's the next one. So my wife and I do this relatively often now. Probably not as often as we should. I don't think anybody does it as often as they should. But sitting down and talking about money with your spouse. That we do do often. We talk about money all the time. About our personal financial goals. Our, about our financial goals for our kids. Um, you guys, Corey was, my lovely wife was on the episode a couple weeks ago. And we talk, talked about no Amazon August. So now we're doing spouse permission September. And um, talking about money has helped us dramatically. It gets us on the same page. Uh, I don't know how couples do it. They keep their finances separate. But regular budget meetings, that's something I wish we would have started doing earlier. We always did a good job of talking about money, but we never never hammered out our expenses early on in our marriage. We just, you know, we're kind of scraping by, and then when we had extra money, we spent it. And uh, and so, you know, just goes back to being a, a better communicator on, on your finances. And we got to get rid of those the stigma of talking about money. We just got to talk about money. Spend on memories, not stuff. So this is my last and final one. I think the first first thing here kind of addresses it is, is buying the smaller house. I think buying the smaller house would have opened up cash flow for myself to do things like start investing in the 401k earlier and knock down student debt and build up cash savings. But spending mem- but it also would have been used for spending memory money on memories instead of stuff. So, you know, we have two little kids now, two little girls. And so us going on a vacation is like, like a big deal because, you know, you either got to take kids with you, which if you've been on vacation with kids, it's not really vacation for uh, you. Uh, or you got to pawn them off on somebody, which is a whole thing, all, uh, a whole nother topic altogether, right? But when, when you're dual income with no kids, which is what we were for five years, uh, you have the you have the time flexibility. Maybe with a smaller house, we'd had some more financial flexibility to do it. Is you can pick up and say, "Let's go to Vegas for the weekend," and you can do that on a Thursday afternoon and leave Friday Friday evening morning. Right? You can just do that. You can piss off to Jamaica for a weekend. You can do whatever you want if you have the flex- financial flexibility to do it. If you're not constrained by kids. It's just a matter of making those memories and not buying stuff. So when I say spend money on memories, not stuff, house wasn't really stuff, but there were some other things in there that we bought that we probably didn't need to buy. Spend money on memories, not stuff. That's the, I mean, honestly, that's advice to anybody at any age is spend, spend money on memories, not stuff. Experiences with your family, experiences with your friends, experience with your partner, spend money on that kind of stuff because, you know, stuff like this. And if you can't see them holding up my, I, I, my phone, not my iPhone. I don't like iPhones. Um, and you know, the, the, the part of it is, is that when you spend money on memories, it, it lasts, 
this phone is probably good for two, three years, right? So spend money on memories, not stuff. But that's going to do it for this week uh, with financial strategies. I am Bryce Carter, host of Prosperity by the Pint. Don't forget to subscribe, iTunes, YouTube, Facebook, wherever you listen. That's where we are. Cheers. The topics that I discuss in this podcast are meant to be general information and educational only. I'm not giving you specific advice because I don't know you personally. In order to give you specific advice, you should work with an advisor or someone that can learn your specific situation and give you advice that applies to you. If I talk about a specific security, please and keep in mind, I'm not recommending that security. And don't forget, investing involves risk. When you invest, there's always the possibility of losing capital, which is why you should consult with a qualified, licensed financial advisor prior to investing.